Side spin can be incredibly helpful on a lot of positional shots, as well as allowing you to spin round obstacles and pop balls that don't quite go. But if you want to play any of these shots, you first need to know how to line them up and aim for the correct place. So this is how you aim any shot with side spin. One of the hardest things to allow for when you play any shot with side spin is it doesn't leave your cue in a straight line. It's easier to see with this plastic ball because it's lighter and the effect's more dramatic. Hit it on the left hand side and it's going to leave your cue at an angle to the right. So if I hit the ball to one side, I know it's going to deflect off in the opposite direction. This line shows you roughly where the cue ball's going to go the further to the right I strike it. It deflects away more to the left. So you can see, if I want to pot the blue with right hand side here, I'm going to have to allow for the deflection to the left. But how do you do that? Well, a lot of that will be down to the cue you're using. Every cue is different and causes a different amount of deflection. If I aim for this red on the top cushion absolutely full ball, but put a lot of side on it at the last minute, with my cue it doesn't miss the red by far. But what happens if I do the same thing with a lower quality cue? It's not always about price, but once upon a time this was the cheapest one I could find on eBay, and when I do the same thing with this, it misses by a lot further, which makes it harder to play a straight shot. Put simply, some cues hit straighter than others, but that's not the only thing you have to allow for. Watch the line as I strike lower. It makes the cue ball break wider, which makes backspin shots a little bit harder to play. You can see with this green, I'm hitting it about a tip length to the left of center, but it misses by a long way. Striking higher on the ball has the opposite effect and causes less deflection, so you won't have to allow for the cue ball breaking so wide. But it doesn't make a huge difference. You still have to allow for quite a bit of deflection on these shots as well. The only way to find out how to control this is by practicing it and discovering how much your cue deflects on each and every shot. So when you play a shot with side, you can work out how far off line the cue is going to throw the cue ball. But it's vital you've worked this all out before you get to the table and you don't change your mind on the way to the shot. If you know where you're going to strike the cue ball before you get to the table, you're giving yourself the chance to make the calculation and allow for how wide the cue ball's going to break. But there is a bigger problem that I haven't really mentioned yet. Imagine I'm going to play this shot about half as hard as I can hit it, but at the last minute I decide to strike the cue ball a little bit harder. Why does that miss? The speed at which you're going to play the shot is something else that's vital to know before you get to the table. If I don't strike the cue ball as hard as I intend to here, it's not going to deflect anywhere near as much as I'm expecting it to, causing it to miss by a long way. The same thing if I hit it too hard. This makes the cue ball deflect a little bit too much to the left hand side, causing me to miss the pot very slightly to the right. Well, hey. When you're allowing for side spin, it's very easy to lose focus on how hard you strike the cue ball. And it's difficult to get all these things right at the same time. But this isn't the only thing you have to be able to aim correctly. But we're gonna look at that after we find Jonas from Bern, Switzerland, which is there. You would think when you play a shot with a lot of side spin, that's gonna affect the path that the cue ball travels. And it does. Watch it spin very slightly to the left here. It's very difficult to control this because it'll be affected by how thick the cloth is and every table's different. So if you're playing a slow shot with side spin, in this case right hand side, then you've got to also allow for the spin gripping the cloth and moving very slightly to the right on an arc as it gets to the object ball. Sean Murphy's using this arc effect to pot a red that doesn't quite go, but if I was going to do the same thing on my table, I'd have to hit it harder because my cloth's a little bit thicker than you'd see on TV, and this makes quite a big difference. So ideally you want to avoid the cue ball spinning on the cloth, and there's a few ways to do that. As the distance from the object ball gives it more time to spin, and the pace at which it's moving affects the cue ball more and more as it slows down, you can avoid this by playing closer shots and playing longer shots with a little bit more pace. 
Doing this won't give the cue ball time to grip the cloth and will avoid the variability of playing on different tables. But sometimes you have to play these shots at a slower pace, so what happens then? If I want to pop this red slowly and come back out for the pink with left hand side, the cue ball's going to arc on its way to the red. I can't avoid this. All I can do is control the arc so I can focus on where I want the cue ball to go and try and judge the spin as I play the shot. Once you get used to the pace and grip of the cloth, this becomes a lot easier. It's just vital you focus on where you want to strike the object ball. You don't want to play too many of these shots before you get used to the weight of the table, but once you do, you can begin potting balls that don't quite go. From this position, I can't even see the green, but I'm still going to pot it because I'm going to play it with left hand side. And as the cue ball slows down and loses speed, that's going to make it move to the left. I'm still going to have to allow for a small amount of deflection, but this won't be too much because I'm playing it slowly. Once again, I need to focus on where the cue ball needs to go in order to pot the green, and then I can work out where I need to strike the cue ball and the pace. Because whether this shot works or not depends on how hard I strike the cue ball. But when these shots come up, you just want to think about them as regular side spin shots. There's no point me worrying about the pink getting in the way here, because if I play it with side spin correctly, it won't. We've just got to find Jason, who's in Leighton, Utah. She's in there. And that brings us to the last thing we haven't looked at. Something you have to allow for if you want to aim a shot with side spin correctly. What happens when the cue ball is spinning and it strikes an object ball? Well, put simply, it throws the object ball to the opposite direction of which it's spinning. You don't really have to worry about this too much because the effect is tiny. If I play this pink from a marked position, right next to the blue as a stun shot, then I know if I replace the pink on the spot, this is where I'm going to have to hit it if I want to pot it again. But if I put a red next to the cue ball and move it very slightly over in the way, I shouldn't be able to pot the pink. But if I put everything back in the same place and move the blue because it's going to be in the way now, and play the shot with right hand side, I can just about hit enough of the pink to pot it. So from this sort of range, all the spin you can physically get on the cue ball will make the difference of about half a pocket. And honestly, that's not anywhere near as much of a difference as the deflection or the spin on the cloth you have to allow for. In fact, I believe thinking about this added complication actually makes it less likely that you're going to pot the ball. So if we put it all together, here's how you aim with side spin. Step one, make sure you know what you're going to do with the shot. So how much side spin you're going to put on the cue ball because that'll have a big effect when we go to play it. Step two, work out from where your tip's going to hit the cue ball, how much this is going to cause it to deflect and break wide and spin on the cloth. Step three, try and avoid the cue ball spinning on the cloth if you can get away with it because it just complicates things. But the shot I want to play is to stun the cue ball around the back of the black with side spin and if I want to play it slow enough to hold for the black, then I'm going to have to allow for the cue ball rolling a little bit across the table. Step 4. Once you've made the decision, go to the table to play the shot, and keep focusing where you're aiming on the object ball. It's vital you don't change this plan, because any little detail could make you miss. And step five is to just simply play the shot as you intend to play it. If all goes well, you'll pot the ball, but if not, try and work out what sort of a mistake you made with your calculations. It's not really even worth thinking about how the cue ball spin affects the object ball. But there is one or two more things we need to look at. Because the cloth of the table is smooth in this direction towards the black end, when you play shots against it, the spin has a weird effect. I am playing this shot with right hand side, which should make it spin to the right, and it does, but as it slows down, the cue ball then spins back to the left. Just be aware of this, because in this direction, it makes it even harder to play an accurate slow shot with side spin. And side spin also has a weird effect on the object ball with thinner shots. If I play this one exactly where I think the cue ball should go, I end up very fractionally missing it wide. But this doesn't happen if I play the shot with right hand side. 
I explain exactly why this happens in the top video, or if you want to know more about the effects of side spin rather than just how to aim the shots, have a look at the other video. And remember, don't just watch play and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel and visit the website. See you later.